Ladies and gentlemen, I suppose you're all as curious as I am to find out which one of us sent us 500 pounds each and also arranged a sumptuous repast. So I, I shall read the invitation again just to remind us all while we're here. Monday the 3rd of May will be 20 years to the day since you sat on the jury that convicted Arthur Blake to life in prison. And to celebrate this day, you're invited to dine at the above address. However, your final verdict on one important aspect of the case is still required. The small music box on the dining table will start at exactly midnight. Oh, Intriguing. And like myself, an offer which none of you could refuse. <laughs> yeah, but who said it? And why the 500 nicker? Yeah. But uh, this is the, uh, the bit that intrigues me. But the final verdict on one important aspect of the case is still required. Now, final is underlined. What could be more final than sending a man off to prison for life? <laughs> I think we're about to find out. Well, you've got to hand it to him. The food was magnificent. Oh, yes. not, oh yeah. Well, I think it's all most entertaining. I'm just sorry that I couldn't bring my friend Roger. Oh, listen, how charming. Thank you for coming. May I welcome Mr. Vance, the actor? I did enjoy your detergent commercial. Mr. Marks, the bank clerk. Mr. Stebbins, undertaker. Mr. Brown, taxi driver. Mr. Goodwin, the publisher. Dr. Mason and Mrs. Mason. Mr. Coleman, an antiques dealer. Mr. Parker, a publican. And welcome, Miss Rhodes. The other four jury members are now deceased. It gave me great pleasure in disposing of them. In fact, Within 30 minutes, you will all be dead by my hand. <laughs> yeah. Who am I? <laughs> I'm Arthur Blake, and I'm sitting with you now. Hello, and welcome to another Who Done It. The only difference being no one's actually been done yet, but someone sitting amongst them has just promised to kill them all within 30 minutes. So while they digest that news with their farewell dinner, let's meet this week's panel. First, the combination of lovely actress and Fulham football supporter, Miss Honor Blackman. <laughs> the man who used to be about the house until Chrissy went and married his brother. But, in fact, he'll be opening a bistro in a new TV series at the end of this year, Richard O'Sullivan. <laughs> he gets through for the price of one. <laughs> now, a man who you uh, usually recognise as Harry Hawkins in Softly Softly, who recently, would you believe, has been playing uh, Fataninus in the film Jesus Christ, Norman Bowler. <laughs> Although I said Fataninus, <laughs> I mean Pataninus. And representing you, the viewers, this week's TV Times Who Done It competition winner is from Primrose Hill area of London, Henry Cadder. <laughs> now, well, we know what the others do for a living, Henry. What about you? What do you do? I work in the government service. Passport office. The, the which what? Passport office. The passport office. And you're also a, a criminologist, amateur criminologist. Yes. You? Well, that should help you. Yes. I'm sure it will help you very well. Good. Now, if Henry gets it right, he can choose for his prize something that has been uh, used in the plot of the show, but I advise him to keep clear of the caviar. Now, there are three good clues to spot, so let's rejoin the jury and see how they're taking the news that in 30 minutes, they'll all be dead. And for those of you who can remember Senior Vences, open the box, please. You convicted me 20 years ago on circumstantial evidence. I was innocent. But you took the word of two eyewitnesses. It's a practical joke, isn't it? <laughs> now, you sat together for two weeks. But do you remember each other? People change, but revenge doesn't. Oh, by the way, all the cars have been immobilised, and the phone wires have been cut, and the butler has been paid enough to leave and forget. Now all that remains is for you to die. It reminds me of when I played in Ten Little Niggers, the lyric. Inside the beluga caviar you ate was a tiny poisoned capsule for each of you. If you can all agree which one of you is me, I will provide the antidote. If not, you will die one by one. Oh, 
for God's sake. You're a doctor. Why don't you do something? Please keep calm. If we have been poisoned, which I very much doubt, then we shall have to find the antidote, won't we? I don't remember him. Hmm? No, nor do I. How dare you? I'm Herbert Vance, the actor, and I have a full page in Spotlight. And what is more, I don't remember him. I'm Jim Parker. I run a pub. Everybody knows me. Hey. Ask anybody. Well, how can we ask anybody? I mean, none of us have seen each other for 20 years. Mm. Except for the doctor and his wife. Mm. Oh, yes. Well, I, I think I remember Mr. Goodwin. Yes, yes, I do. Didn't we discuss the cookery book I was going to write? That's right. I remember we did uh, traditional English cooking, wasn't it? Yes, that's yes. Look, <laughs> we've all been poisoned. I'm dying. Isn't anyone going to do anything? Mm. What can we do? Please, 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 please sit down, down everybody. It's an impossible situation. This, I, think this is, I think we're all overreacting. Now, I'll just go and check the phone. You know, uh, speaking as a publisher, I think it's a great idea for a story, but... Uh, who, in their right minds, would sit with us, waiting to be unmasked as a killer? Well, I don't want to be depressing, mm. but Blake was sent away for 20 years, so he's bound to be the teensy-weensy this bit do lally. Oh. I'm getting out. Where's he going? Okay. The phone has been cut. What? No. You were the foreman of the jury, and you argued for a conviction. I wanted him off. So you did? Yes. And I was on his side. I was only expressing an opinion. He didn't persuade anybody. You all came to the same decision. We well, did rather really? bully us. He did. Oh, he, he was as guilty as hell, and you know it. You're only agreeing, so we won't suspect it's you. Well, unless he's had plastic surgery, how do we know it's not you? You're right, Miss Rhodes. Parker was much thinner, and he had nicer teeth. It's 20 years ago, damn it. Of course I put on a bit of weight. Run a pub. So you say. Your voice is different, too. <laughs> Murdering bastard! Yeah, let go of it! You! Oh, oh, yeah. there. He's out in the open! Oh. It's him! Look, look, he's as mad as a hat! He's mad as a hat! Bloody stupid! Marx is threatening me! If it really is Marx! Can't you see? He's mentally unbalanced! Yeah. He has fixed the cost! Why oh, my cab! So it must have been whoever came here last! Well, who did I come last? It. You oh. did! Yeah. What? You Sorry? did! Me? Yeah. And unless I'm mistaken, that's a wig you're wearing! No, uh, well, uh, it is Blake. I remember him clearly now. I said it was him. Where is it? Where's the antidote? They're all mad. And one of you's a murderer. I'm going up the road and I'm going to get the police. What? He was not tied. So it's all out the window. Yes, of course. It's him. He's scrutiny. Give me the antidote. He said if we all remembered, he would save us. I can't breathe. Oh! One thing is certain, it wasn't Parker. Yeah. How can you just sit there drinking? I'm an undertaker. Death happens every day. When your nearest and dearest have gone, well, all it means is business. You horrible man. We've all got to go sometime or other. I used to envy some of the people I boxed up. If I had the nerve, I'd have taken myself away years ago. You see, some of my best friends are there. Yeah? I'm surprised you had any. He must be mad. Oh, poor little bank clerk, eh? Do you think that standing at a window with your name in front of it, do you think that's life, eh? Doctor, okay. don't let's waste time. Let's do what Blake says and think back. Yeah. If we can identify that one of us is Blake, then he may, in his insanity, give me the antidote. Well, he already made his point as far as I'm concerned, and I certainly never believed that he was guilty. Yeah. Nor me. It was a miscarriage of justice. You voted with us at the time, Mr. Yes. Rose. Oh, you made us change our minds. Yes. Yes. All right, everybody, let's all think back to that day 20 years ago. And perhaps in remembering, we might recall one another's faces a little bit more clearly. Because if we don't, I think we're all going to die. <laughs>
right, welcome back to Who Done It. Now, to briefly recap, the surviving members of a jury that committed Arthur Blake to life in prison 20 years ago have just eaten a poisoned dinner. Now, only Mr. Blake has the antidote, but he's a master of disguise, and unless they can spot him, those left alive will die too. Now, can they remember what they all looked like 20 years ago when they spent two weeks together deciding his fate? All I can remember from 20 years ago is that I had a monkey gland injection to stay young, and the only benefit I found was when I forgot my front door key, I run up and down drain pipes rather easily. <laughs> anyway, let's rejoin the plot as they recall the time when they last met in the jury room. But they better hurry up, or there'll be none left. Although it was 20 years ago, I remember we were equally divided. The late Miss Hans, Mr. Stebbins and Mr. Parker, Mr. Goodwin and myself, Oh, and Mr. Marks were for a guilty verdict. And Mr. Brown, my wife, who was then Miss Jennings, Mr. Coleman, Mr. Vance, Miss Rhodes, oh, and the late Mr. Baxter were against. Mmm. What's the matter? Coffee. I, th I thought it was tea. Coffee's poisoned me, my dear. You've got mine. Here's your tea. Oh, Look, if we you. don't come to a unanimous so decision, right. there's going to have to be a retrial. Yeah, you know? never. Yeah. Look, you see, I still can't get his sister's evidence out of my mind. I mean, she did seem so utterly convincing. I must say I agree that she would have to be a very good actress to lie that well. Well, you'd expect an sister to lie, wouldn't you? Naturally, she's going to say he was with her. But she was under oath. So? Well, I believed her. Well, perhaps you would lie if your brother's future were at stake. Yes, but a girl has died. I mean, it's got to be manslaughter, hasn't it? Mm. No. Listen to this in the evidence. Look, the type of rope that was used was identical to the type of rope used on his boat. What more do you want? Look, it was a new 25-foot coil with six foot missing. Now, that six foot was used to tie the girl up. Yeah. And two persons positively identified Blake as the man they saw near the warehouse where the woman was found. Yeah. My dear fellow, at eight o'clock on a rainy night, how can they be sure? Yes, well, it's unlikely that two of them are going to make the same error. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Well, perhaps you're right. The man's got a history of violence. I say put him away. Yeah. yeah Look, we've right. been discussing no. this now for two weeks. If he goes free and someone else dies, well, it's you that would be responsible. Oh, that's a very good point. Yeah. I think you're right, Dr. Mason. I'm going to change my vote. Thank you, Miss Jennings. Yes, well, I'm inclined to agree with you. Oh, but I do wish I hadn't been called. I'm quite exhausted now. Well, all I know is it's costing me money every day my cab's not on the road. So let's get on with it, eh? Yeah, yeah that's not the reason you're changing your mind, I hope. Well, you don't marry now, does it? You're all in favour. Right. All those in favour of guilty, oh, please yeah. raise their hands. Well, that was the last time we met. And it seems to me we all looked quite different. Well, I don't think I've changed all that much. But you have. You, um... You never had that mole on your cheek. No, it's, it's grown since then. They can, you know. Oh, really? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I've been married to him for 15 years. I would surely... Shh. What does that mean? Oh, I was just completing the quotation. Mm. Means we couldn't see the bleeding capsules in the caviar. You know about cars. You drive a cab. Well, so what? Yeah, you don't think I immobilised them all? Well, how could I? There were two or three came after me. Yeah, but you went out to look for the cars. I mean, you could have done it then. You'll get a bunch of fives up your big hooter in a minute, mate. Look, Blake had to be here first to put the poison in. Assuming the butler didn't do it. Who did come first? Well, I was, uh, I was second with Sheila. I Mark, you were first, weren't you? But the butler could have served the caviar and not known that it was poisoned. We all sat at named places. Which ensured your safety. What in heaven's name are you all talking about? I accuse you of being black. I knew it. So do I. Yeah, so do I. In fact, I recognise you now. You're nothing like Mark's. You're Blake. You're Blake. 
Yes, you're Blake. Now, come on, Stebbins. Doesn't even look like Blake. Oh, fiddlesticks. How can you remember what Blake looked like? I can't even remember what Marx looks like. Except he doesn't look like Marx. Oh, for God's sake, Stebbins or Stubbins or whatever you're called. We haven't all got the death wish, you know. All right, all right, it is Blake. Oh, yes. Yes, please, God, please make it Blake. We all accuse you of being Blake. Mm -hmm. Look! <laughs> it is him! Look! <laughs> oh, 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 No! Say your Blake! Say your Blake! You can't! Oh, 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 oh. We're all going to die. Oh! Don't say that! It was Marx, and I'm afraid he's dead. I'm not afraid of dying. Otherwise, I'd have named the killer and received the antidote. But I'm, I'm rather looking forward to meeting a lot of my old friends in just a few moments. You... you know who it is? Uh, oh, yes. Ever since we recall our last discussion in the jury room. Mr. Stebbins isn't going to reveal who done it, but then, of course, being an undertaker, that's only natural. He's hoping for more trade. Uh, Mr. Now, Chairman, former of the jury, I must urge the panel to ask their questions as soon as possible. I do fear for the life expectancy of my colleagues. Yes, quite so, Doctor. I'm sure they will. Now, panel, is there any part of the action that you would like to see again? Richard, what would you like to see? Uh, yes, I'd like to open the box. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, Honour. <laughs> Um, mm. I'd like to see the uh, first part of the jury scene again. I'd like to see it all, mind you, but well, if you I can only choose. Well, you see, you'll see just that. Good, Norman. Uh, I'd like to see the, um, the last part of the jury scene. Right. Henry? I would like to see the doctor attending to Mr. Parker. Right. Good. Now let's uh, let's open up for a few questions. Richard, a question. Uh, yes, I'd like to ask, uh, in fact, uh, Mr. Coleman, the antique yes. fellow. Yeah. Um, what do you reckon, sort of, a, a reconditioned Chesterfield would cost me today? Oh dear. You see, I mean, I call myself an antique dealer, but I'm afraid it's a teeny bit cheating because. Um, in fact, I mean, almost anything's called an antique nowadays. I mean, what in fact I deal with is sort of trivia, memora memorabilia, um, objet trouvé, sort of um, old records. Actually, I've got a very good collection of um, old, uh, early Max Jaffa, and I can't <laughs> get rid of it. It's most unfortunate. Uh, however, um, you know, and um, old annuals, um, children's games from Victorian times. Um, <laughs> yes, thank you very much indeed. I think it's quite enough of that. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. I wanted to ask him, actually, how much his reconditioned wig <laughs> Yes, I, you did ask that question. <laughs> Would you like to ask, answer the question? that was asked you, is that? How much did that reconditioned wig cost you? <laughs> I think that's rather tasteless. Uh, well, I think that's a wig, you see. Yeah, well, um... Uh, can, can you prove this? I do find baldness um, quite ugly, you see, and so, um, you know, and I feel that um, if one is, um, if one wishes to give pleasure to, to other people, one should, um, <laughs> <laughs> at all times, you know... It, but it, is it a wig or is it not a wig? Uh, yeah, well, yes, I... Thank you very much. Let's cut on you for a moment. Yes. <laughs> oh no, it's like you're asking questions. Well, um, uh, the risk of being tactless, uh, it would seem to me that Mr. Stebbings doesn't have very long. Um, <laughs> and, and since you say you know who done it, oh, why yeah. not tell us who done it? Oh, uh, well, yes, sir. Uh, uh, I'm very pleased. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, you see, as an undertaker, I, when, I, when I see people, I assess them for the kind of yes. casket they would have. Uh, Could you get to the point? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, doctor, would you like to check whether the gentleman is in fact dead? <laughs> it would appear he's dead. It would appear he's dead. <laughs> right. Uh, well, let's mm. leave him there. And I should have kept the him to the point. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bola, would you like to well, ask one question? Question? Uh, Mr. Brown, before you go, um, could you tell me, please, how much would it cost me to go from, say, um, Heathrow to Highgate? Heathrow to Highgate? Yes. 
Well, I should say, I reckon a roundabout fee would be £4.50 to £5, but I should expect a, a large tip on top of that as well, sir. Oh, thank you very much. I was done. Yeah, there, there it goes. <laughs> That's the, uh, the buzzer for the first playback, which is mm. Richard O'Sullivan's. Uh, Richard, you're obviously a music lover because you wanted to see and hear the music box when it starts up at midnight. Here it is. Oh, oh, yeah. well, I think it's all most entertaining. I'm just sorry that I couldn't bring my friend Roger. Oh, listen, how charming. Thank you for coming. May I welcome Mr. Vance, the actor? I did enjoy your detergent commercial. Mr. Marks, the bank clerk. Mr. Stebbins, undertaker. Mr. Brown, taxi driver. Mr. Goodwin. You should be looking happy. I'm extremely happy. You are? <laughs> Good. And that helped you tremendously, of course. Oh, yes. Good. Mm. Fine. Would you like to ask a question about your playback? Uh, well, yes, actually. I'd like to ask, uh, in, in fact, a question to Vance, the actor. Mm, sure. Actually. Uh, I did enjoy your commercial, you know, when that little kid said, Mummy, why are my hands so soft? And you belted him across the face. But, I mean, <laughs> apart from that, <laughs> do you sort of... Is it, is it, is it easy for an actor to die? France. Yes, I would say it is fairly easy. Have we proved it today, do you think? <laughs> Thank you. Ah. <laughs> yes, well, that came at a very opportune time. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, Henry Caddows. Uh, you, Henry, you asked to see Parker, the publican's death, uh, with or is it without the assistance of Dr. Mason? With the, with, with the doctor. Oh, man. And one of you is a murderer. I'm going up the road and I'm going to get the police. What? What's wrong, guys? Let's go out the window. Yes, of course. It's him. It's good. Oh, Give right me now. the antidote. What? He said if we all remembered, he would save us. I can't, I can't, I can't breathe. Oh. Right, Henry? Yes. Do you want to ask a question about that? Yes. Uh, Mrs. Mason, Dr. Mason's wife, you seem to be very familiar with uh, the technique. Were you, in fact, a qualified nurse at no. the time you were on the jury? Oh, no, certainly not. Are you now a qualified nurse? No, but I've been married to the doctor for 15 years. And one does, you know, you have to cope with things. People ring up in the middle of the night, and people are distraught, mothers particularly, and you have to be able to sort of comfort them while he is getting ready to leave the house and get there. So you do learn something. Have you ever? Thank you very much indeed. Ready now for the uh, next uh, playback, which is uh, Honor Blackman's. Honor, you wanted to go back 20 years to see what happened at the beginning of the jury room scene. Yes. Here it is. The late Miss Hans, Mr. Stebbins and Mr. Parker, Mr. Goodwin and myself, Oh, and Mr. Marks were for a guilty verdict. And Mr. Brown, my wife, who was then Miss Jennings, Mr. Coleman, Mr. Vance, Miss Rhodes. Yes, Honor, any questions? Yes, um, uh, Mr. Goodwin, there are 12 strong men or women and oh, true oh, on oh, the jury. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, oh. in the face of all this, I would still like to ask my question. Uh, there appeared to be ten of you at the beginning of the evening, and four people are already dead who are supposed to be on the jury. Arthur Blake is supposed to have taken care of those. Why then does that amount to 14? Can you tell me uh, how these figures add up from your memory? I'm not sure I understand the, <coughs> the question correctly. You say there were, there were 14? Um, I think there were 12 on the jury. We were all 12 sitting there. Yes, around. but if four are already dead, and you started this evening with 10 of you sitting around the table, and only Miss Hans is the, uh, the only other one I've seen. And so uh, Mr. Mr. Dead, Mr. Baxter, Miss, Miss Hans and Mr. Baxter. <laughs> Miss Hans uh, and Mr. Baxter were dead. Yes, There are 10 of you there. Yeah. 12 originally. But he did say four. Mm. Ah! There goes another one. Trust going him fast. to be dramatic. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to startle, ladies and gentlemen. It, they are going very quickly, and the buzzer's gone. We're ready now for 
the next playback. Yes, please, light up a cigarette, have a drink, calm the nerves. Norman, you yes. have asked yes. uh, for the end yes. of the jury room scene yes. when they all stand up and find right. Blake guilty. Yeah. Well, all I know is it's costing me money every day my cab's not on the road. So let's get on with it, eh? Yeah, that's not the reason you're changing your mind, I hope. Well, you don't matter now, does it? You're all in favour, right? All those in favour of guilty, okay. please raise their hands. Well, that was the last time we met. Nancy? Mm. Yes, Norman. Did that help you? Uh, yes, sort of. Um, Miss Rhodes, um, just to refresh my memory, do you... Uh, oh, excu excuse me, interrupting you. Uh, Mr. Vance, are you dying? I'm just preparing. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I got one out of four. <laughs> I'm so sorry to have stopped you. I, I, for a nasty minute, I thought he was off. I think we can safely assume that the lady has gone. Yes. <laughs> the Lord. yes, do continue, even though we may Well, if I just us. wait a bit, I think that it's going to be very easy. <laughs> <laughs> Another five Chris, minutes, so it's only going to be one leg. Ah, but that doesn't um, make any difference, because you must remember, you see, the murderer can always lie. Ah, yes. yes. So all those bodies might have <laughs> bodies. Uh, Miss Rhodes, could you just refresh my memory? Do you, do you like tea? Well, I do like tea, yes. You like tea? But I drink coffee as well. But you, you drink tea and coffee? Yes, indeed. Good, thank you. Is that all? Yes, that's all I want to know. Oh, well, let's, uh, yes, of course, Anna. Yes, well, let's open it all up now to uh, open questions. Mr. Edwards, why is it that you were left-handed then and you appear to be right-handed now? I sustained a very bad fracture of my arm and indeed a college fracture of my left wrist. And during that period of a year when it was out of order, I took to being right-handed and in fact found it quite easy to continue. So you'd sustain the fracture of mm -hmm. your... My left arm. Of your left arm. Yes. I see. Fine, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Richard. Well, could I ask, Miss Rose, as well, please? How is it, th uh, um, when you were in the jury room, you seem to have had some sort of a, sort of a, 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 a Cornish or, or West Isn't Country sort of accent, and it seems to have sort of disappeared. Uh, it well, I, I've left Cornwall for 25 years now, and having gone into the trade of cookery, and indeed I run a restaurant, I find it just left me. I no longer have an accent. Some okay. people can get rid of the accents, my dear, and others can't. Right. Some have to learn to speak like a lady, <laughs> like I did. Absolutely. <laughs> Henry, question. Mm. Oh, yes, uh, Doctor, did you form any opinion as to what poison was being used? Well, there are a vast uh, number of poisons. Um, I should imagine it's, some, it's probably one of those tropical poisons. I don't specialize in tropical medicine, but it would seem to have some sort of timing mechanism inside it. So as it sinks into the, uh, into the system, it then uh, per permeates into the blood system, rather like one of those cold pills you get where... I think they're called slow absorption. Um, yeah, like. after a half an hour, the head's cured, and then the throat, and so on. So, well, this can also happen with uh, with poison capsules too. I should imagine it's probably a tropical poison. You didn't you didn't put a name to it. I mean, it could have well, been I, I mean, and there and are many, many known. thousands. Uh, it could have been strychnine, and you might not have known. Uh, I'm not altogether sure it'd be strychnine. Strychnine is pretty fast acting. This is uh, this is taking a good one an hour. Hour and a half. So so far, I, I perhaps it will last. I sincerely hope it lasts longer. Mm. Yes. Uh, could I ask the, the, yes. uh, Mr. Goodwin, the publisher, um, what sort of books do you sort of <coughs> publish? Uh, d d I compile. Uh, I don't uh, actually. Uh, ah! Oh. 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 Uh, excuse me. <laughs> oh <dear. laughs> Just play for time. <laughs> <laughs> when you're ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Amongst all this, I'm compiling these do-it-yourself <laughs> magazines that compile up to um, sort of reference libraries. Yes. But I actually don't. Com I'm only working. Uh, Are you into Agatha Christie or anything? Oh no, no, no. This is, is the paperbacks and uh, the magazine publishing. Fine, thank you. Yes, Norman. Uh, Mr. Vance, a full page of Spotlight when you can only have half a page. Oh, I didn't know that. The spotlight owes me a rebate. 
Yes. Oh, well. Yeah, very good. <laughs> well, very well out. <laughs> Anna? Mr. Goodwin, I put it to you that you weren't there in the flashback of the jury scene. Oh, absolutely, I was. I don't remember seeing you. There was somebody there, and it certainly wasn't you. Well, I, I assure you, dear lady, oh, I remember it distinctly. It was a tremendous argument, and it went on for weeks. Yes, I'm quite convinced <coughs> that you weren't there at all. Yes, it's oh. time you went. I think it's getting a bit embarrassing. Oh, <laughs> oh what a good thing he managed to get that <laughs> question out before, before he left. Yes. 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 Well, they're going fast. There are two left. Yeah. Yeah. Questions, anybody? Any more questions? Um, hmm. Of course, people remember do change very much in 20 years. I don't personally change very much, but I looked 100 when I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> it has That's its advantages, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> um, uh, 12. Well, who, who can we ask? There's not a lot of people <laughs> left, is there? <laughs> well, ask who is left. Um, 12. What do you? Uh, 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 what have you been doing, Mr. Vance, uh, since your commercial? He's been in <laughs> tremendous I've been in for a considerable time. <laughs> that's a, I think that's one of the greatest comedy shows on television at the moment. I think it's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Did you not get rather tired of it? I find it very exhausting because the rehearsals are very short. Yeah. <laughs> you have to learn a lot in a very short time. I see. Ah. Yeah. Are you still doing that program? No, I finished. <gasps> Uh, he's finished. Oh. Yes. Uh, how? Yes, he's finished. <laughs> Easy, does it? Easy. Does it. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you shouldn't have. That was, that was his finest performance. Mr. Vance has never given a better performance. <laughs> so, we have a very little time left, but there is one lady there. Yes. Would anybody you like to ask, ask her a question? Her a question. Mm. Mm. What, what is your favourite dish? that you, uh, you know, <laughs> in your restaurant? Well, in fact, I, we specialise in, in country cooking mm -hmm. of various areas. We have a Yorkshire week and then a Scottish week. But my favourite is always when we come back to Cornwall and I can make a good old tatey hoggy. Sorry, what? Uh, a tatey hoggy. How do you make that? Well, that's in a pastry case. It was made for the miners many years ago. And originally, they had a separation in the middle with the jam and cream at one end and then the savoury at the other. Steak and kidney, onions, parsley is the main herb in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, nothing better than a nice titty on the area. Yes. Well, time is up in more ways than right. one. Everyone's dead except Miss Rhodes, and she could go at any second. So we must conclude that if, as usual, the murderer is to stand up and identify himself, he is only faking death. But who is it? But well, the panel is not allowed to stick a pin in to find out either. So while they finish filling in their cards, here's a clip to help the viewers at home. Now, somewhere in what you're about to see is a clue. Well, he don't marry now, does he? You're all in favour. Right. All those in favour of guilty, oh, please raise their hands. Well, that was the last time we met. And it seems to me we all looked quite different. Well, I don't think I've changed all that much. But you have. You, um... You never have that mole on your cheek. Right. Well, did that help you? Well, it should have, because you've seen that playback twice now. Let's see what the panel think. Henry, here's your card. Go on. Oh. Thank you. Right, thank you. <coughs> so, first of all, Richard, who done it and why? Well, first of all, it, it, it couldn't have been the actor uh, Vance, because he died so well, we've got to leave him in peace. <laughs> the Dr. Mason talked absolute twaddle, so that can't be true. And if the minicab driver, Mr. Brown, is going to charge £5.50 from Highgate to Heathrow, he deserves to die. <laughs> <laughs> As, no, he doesn't deserve to die. <laughs> <laughs> and Miss Rhodes here with the Cornish recipe of uh, Tiddy Oggy, which has got jam, cream at one end, and meat and potatoes. She should have died. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, for some unknown reason, because Mr. Goodwin actually wore glasses for some unknown reason, and we've never seen them again, and there was no reason explained, or I didn't see it, uh, I think it's Mr. Goodwin. Mr. Goodwin, right, honour. Um, likewise, I think Mr. Goodwin. 
I think that he attempted to knock off Miss Rhodes fairly early on. I think he did her great physical damage. And um, I think under threat of instant death, she cooperated with him. And she did the voice on the, on the machine. And she is still alive. But Mr. Goodwin, I believe, to be Arthur Blake. Thank you. Norman? Uh, I think it's Mr. Coleman. And I think that because um, of when he was in the jury, he thought coffee was a poison to him. And yet, later on, he was drinking coffee. When, uh, 20 years later, he was drinking coffee quite easily. It wasn't poison. Also, um, I thought the voice sounded very much like his. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Henry? Dr. Mason. Dr. Mason. Yes. Why? He made no attempt to revive Mr. Parker. He left his wife to undo his collar. He only made a cursory examination of Parker. He only took his pulse. He didn't test his respiration or his vision. Three, he knew that Marx was Marx. Four, you are born with a mole, you can't grow it. And five, he had no knowledge of poisoning symptoms. Ah, well, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> right, now here comes the exciting moment. Will the killer stand up, please? Ah, Mr. Vance is rising. Is it? <laughs> Mr. Vance, the actor? For my final departure, <laughs> there is one thing I would like to... to it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it obviously wasn't Mr. Vance. <laughs> so, uh, that was a magnificent farewell <laughs> performance. <laughs> if only you could hear the little ripple of applause for your performance, Mr. Vance. Will the real who done it? Stand up, please. Ah. Ah, bow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations, Anna. Congratulations, Richard. Did you get it right the last time you were on the show? You did? No. No? no? Total twaddle last time. <laughs> well, you got it right this time. The other point is, did you get the clues right? So for those of you at home who are not entirely sure why it was good, when here are the clues that you should have spotted. Now, at the dinner party, he was much shorter than the doctor. And yet 20 years before, in the jury room, he was the same height. Uh, similarly, at the dinner, he didn't wear glasses to read, and yet he did in the jury room. Hence the clue, what the eye cannot see. His accomplice was his sister, posing as Miss Rhodes, who was right-handed to dinner and yet left-handed in the jury room. And finally, for those of you with good hearing, you may have recognized Goodwin's voice from the tape recording. Well, next week, our panel will include Uther Joyce and Brian Murphy, who will shortly be seen as George and Mildred in their own television series, and Dr. Dr. Robin Nedwall. <coughs> and if any of you are called for jury service, my best advice is to wear a false nose and a wig, and then they won't recognize you 20 years later. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>